Oh, there it is. Sweetness. Excellence. We see this image. Gang. Oh, yeah. I'm going to share the link in chat so everyone knows it. Awesome. We got a link. We got an image. Here's the image. I'll post that. Um, and uh, you know what? I'm going to pin this as well because I'm going to make sure we have the link in the description of the video when we upload it so let me just draw this gang um i'm going to bring up the chat just in case i'm missing something you guys can correct me on on the stuff weird oops hey what? don't do that we're sloping square we're sloping but it's not uh yeah it's just a prism it wasn't a it, yeah this one's uh here let me draw this to you and i'll give you a little lowdown before we do this right so the question is what was the question again let me pop up darth 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 oh i'm going to bring out a better pen what color do we want darth 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 oh i missed it i missed it missed it how do i calculate the volume been told that i should split the square into a rectangle uh, no, you don't need to do that. You can. Uh, I'll show you how to calculate the volume without having to split everything up. But you can, yeah, sure. Triangular prism, compute the volume for each, then add them together. Yeah, basically. So basically, the question here is: Let's do let's do light blue new pen. Let's see how this works. Out. So the question is uh, geometry related, right? And we have the following shape. And then we'll draw the same thing in the back. And then we'll connect them up. <laughs> My 3D drawing sort of sucks. <laughs> let me bring up, let me take a look at it from what you guys see. Oh yeah, I got a little uh, mutated, mutated piece here. Let's correct it a little bit here. We'll correct it a little bit. I don't know if that's much better, but a little bit, I guess, right? None of my drawings are to scale, not to scale, not to scale here. We'll flatten this guy up too, or raise this guy up as well. Let's make it pretty, more pretty anyway. At least make those parallel, sort of, right? Uh, Mr. Robodope, good afternoon, Chicho. Unfortunately, I have to run to the gym but looking forward to watching later have a nice day everyone you too as well and have a great workout uh, mr robodope uh work hard make sure you pl replenish and drink fluids and have a little bit of protein to build back your muscle asap right so here's the dimensions of this thing oh, i keep on closing that down here's the dimensions what do we got we got 1.3 meters 1.3 meters on the up of the height we got one meter here right? we got two meters here two meters here here and we got 0 0.5 meters here 0 0.5 meters here okay now the way it works is we don't need anything uh, we don't need any other information from that thing so i'm going to bring it down um give me a second diagram itself in the picture states that it isn't actually drawn so your your doesn't have to be perfectly there yeah yeah so not to scale right if that's 0.5 then 1.5 would have been you know a little bit bigger than this or 1.3 would have been a little bit bigger than this and stuff right so take a look at this thing think about geometry in the following form start off with a point right so all shapes consider it and we're thinking like we live in a four-dimensional world right one of the dimensions being time but we live in a three-dimensional spatial dimensional world right so we have you know this way we got up and down and we got in and out right 
So those are the three dimensions that we have, and this is a three-dimensional object, so it's got three directions, right? But start off with a point. Let's say you have a point, right? A point in space has zero dimensions, zero D, right? It's not one, two, three, zero D. It's before we get into the dimensions, right? So this is zero D, okay? And this is a point in space, point in space. Zero D has no units either right and then you can take your point stretch it out in one direction and you have a line or a distance right line or a distance and this is in one direction hence it's one directional 1d right and then you can take your point start off the point right start a point draw a line go a certain distance and then take that line the distance and whoosh, zoom it up right you got this what you have here now is is two directions right remember this was one direction this is one direction and this is the other direction now we've got 2d right two directions and this is a surface or an area right surface or area it could be a map or whatever it is, right? So if you want to find the area of this thing, you measure this distance and then you scan this up, right? It's just like a scanner. It goes up. That gives you the area. And the way you do that is you multiply this times this. That's how you do it, right? You multiply the two directions together. As long as they were 90 degrees if it's not 90 degrees then formula can vary a little bit but you're still really just multiplying the two directions together go along this way and go whoop, zoom up then you get the area start off with the same point make a line take that line turn it into a surface right now you have an area of something right that's what this is an area right and then what you can do, if you want to go in a third direction, whoop, let's say this thing now is a box, right? So you have one direction, you got two directions, that's our this guy and this guy, and then you got three directions, right? So if you got 3D, that means you're multiplying three different directions together. And Visually, the way it works is you start off with a point, generate a line, take this line, whoop, scan up. You got a surface, take the surface, whoop, scan in, right? Go along this distance, and you got a volume, right? That's a surface, you got a volume. You got a 3D shape or prism, if you want to think about it, right? Prism. Well, a prism can exist. You can calculate the area of a prism or something, but let's just call it volume. Okay, let's just call it volume. As now with three dimensions, we can occupy any point in space. Uh, and now with three, dim three dimensions, we can occupy any space. We occupy the whole space, if we want to think about it that way, with the volume, right? So for this, what you need to do is you don't necessarily need to because this is a prism and by the way these are any shape like this is called a prism where one surface appears on the other side where you can just scan it in and you generate a three-dimensional object right so for example you could have a triangular prism there's your triangle and then whoop, zoom it into the page and you get a prism right you can get a cylindrical prism create a square a uh, circle right and then whoop, zoom that circle in and you get a cylinder right so this shape appears on the other shape just by tracking along this dimension right this shape appears on the other side as long as you track along here so over here right i call the triangular present a tobble tobbler roller pro one bar yum dark chocolate one is the best uh first time chat are we doing swift swath not sure if i'm gonna say that <laughs> what you wrote right 
of free Julian Assange gang. Free Assange, free Assange, free Assange. Julian Assange, publisher and journalist that has been crucified for trying to bring transparency and accountability of capitalist power to humanity. For more information, see wikileaks.org, defend.wikileaks.org, or our Julian Assange and Wikileaks playlist on Censor2. And if you need those links, you can come to our chat anytime you want on Twitch and type in exclamation mark uh, free Assange right up here. And what I just said with the links will appear, right? Just a little sidetrack from doing a little mathematics because this is very, very important. Very, very important, right? Now, this that we have here is a prism, right? Because this shape appears on the back side, right? Now, if, for example, this distance was smaller than that distance, you couldn't consider it a prism, right? For example, if this was, this distance here was, let's say, 0 0.75, then you couldn't consider this a prism because this length was longer than this length. So you couldn't just scan in one side to get the other side, right? But they are the same. They told us that by saying it was a prism, okay? So all we really need to do is find the area here, right? And multiply it by this, which happens to be one, and that'll give us our volume, right? So our issue right now is, we're not really gonna calculate two volumes and add them together. We're gonna calculate two different areas and add them together. Now there are formulas for shapes like this, right? that you can that you can do right calculate but because we have these distances we can actually we don't need a special formula um, beyond a rectangle and a triangle because what we can do we can take this thing let's transpose this shape here right so we took this Right? the surface that we're looking for, the surface that appears on the back side, right? And we made a work area for us. And it's okay to do this. You don't have to cram everything on here, right? Do your work. Spread your work out if you need to, right? Don't spread out your train of thought, though. If you're working on a problem in mathematics, keep it orderly, okay? First time child, wall bottle, yes. Let's free him so we can try... try. <laughs> <laughs> you're not very informed you're not very informed put it right back in jail or, uh, you're not very informed the, the you i what what's your name wall bottle you need to you need to you need to find some other sources of information now i highly recommend you don't get involved with politics too much really um if you've been fooled by the propaganda i think you should stick with mathematics personally build up the critical thought process a little bit joe chicho wouldn't a formula for any shape be derived from splitting the shape into triangles and rectangles 100 percent, or circles and circles as well right um or spheres or whatever right so what we do is put down the links here so this is 1.3 that's that guy this is two that's that guy this is 0 0.5 now one thing that you notice i'm not putting in the units anymore because they're all the same units in the final answer you're going to include the units right so how we're going to break this up it's the simplest way to break this up the way you you know the only way right now for this shape we can really break it up is to go start here and come along here oh my god this is my line is wiggly right trying to go slow on the whiteboard is difficult right chicho but isn't the formula for a circle derived from splitting the circle into an infinite number yeah then then you need uh, calculus we're trying to stay away from the calculus aspect of it <laughs> keep it simpler right so all we do we just say okay there's one more level one more uh, formula we need which is a circle which is two more formulas the circumference of a circle and the area of a circle right two pi r and pi r squared so we don't have to go into the calculus level okay. now what we got here is this is 0.5 so this has got to be 0 0.5 right 
easy peasy. If that's 0 0.5, then we got this guy. We know what this is, right? 0 1.3 minus 0 0.5, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.8, right? So this part is 0. Point, here, I'll put it on the other side. So this part here is, oh, I got a little small eraser. This point here is, here, I'll take this out, doink. This is 0 0.8, 0 0.8, right? Okay, cool. And this we know is two, right? Easy peasy. So area uh, uh, rectangle, area of, let's call this one. Area of one is length times width. Length times width, which is length and width, I guess. Two times 0 0.5, which is equal to one. What, is, what are the units? One meter. What's an area of the second shape, which is a triangle? Well, area of a second shape is really area of a rectangle divided by two, right? Because if you break this in half diagonally, you get a triangle. It's the same deal as this, right? Same deal as that, but we only want half of it. So we can go this times this divided by two because you just want half of it. So Joe, to go back to your question, the area formula, even the triangle comes from this, right? So this is gonna be one half length times width, or they call it base times height. They change the letters around. So they go one half base times height. There is the base, there's the height. So it's gonna be two times 0 0.8 divided by two, two kills two. So this area is 0 0.8 meters wink and then this was one so this is one and this is 0 0.8 that's the total area of this doohickey so total area of this doohickey is 1.8 this is 1.8 right that's the area of this doohickey how do we figure out the volume of this thing well we multiply 1.8 by 1 so 1.8 times 1 is equal to 1.8 the area was meters squared. Oh, I should put meters squared, meters squared, my bad, right? So meters squared for the area, for the volume, because you're multiplying by another meter is meters cubed. So the total volume of this thing would be 1.8 meters cubed. Okay. Uh, Slayer, thanks, I understand all this. Cool. I was just struggling to visualize how 1.3 man creates a triangle. Ah, so we see here, right? That's how it creates the triangle. You eliminate this part from this, and you got yourself a triangle here. Right? And it's uh, look, gang. When it comes to geometry, it, it's it, it's it's pretty cool. Uh, with just just my experience from working with a lot of students over the last two plus decades, right, twenty five years or so. Uh, there are some kids. That might not be good in some of the other algebra like just doing simple algebra or hard algebra doesn't make a difference right but they do phenomenal with geometry and then there are people who are really good with uh, algebra that have a hard time with geometry there are some people that have a hard time visualizing the stuff right they have a harder time just seeing how it looks that's why in my personal opinion, any math test you write or any math test that's given to anyone, when there's word problems, they should also have a drawing of the word problem, right? Because English is not everyone's forte. If you're gonna test them for their math abilities, you shouldn't be testing them for their ability to translate from English to math, to the language of mathematics. If, if, if it is, then you should specify that is one of the requirements for the exam, for the course.